Good morning, Katie. Jodie Newell from Newell Media Group. Um, firstly, congratulations on your mission. Um, from a media angle, it's been fantastic watching yourself, Paolo and Dima, over the past few months conduct some outstanding work on the space station. And in particular, Katie, your videos of the tour of the space station and the Soyuz craft really gave us folks on Earth a, a great sense of perspective regarding life in space. And um, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on the importance of communicating the experience of life in space to the general public. Well, it's such a special place to go and such a special mission to be a part of that I, I feel obligated to share and just so excited um, to share. You know, partly just living up there is such an adventure, living in microgravity every single minute of every single day. And the work that it allows us to do on the space station, you know, the different experiments, you know, I just think it's so amazing what we do up there. And I, I felt actually excited about working literally every minute, but also just taking time as a human being to look out the window and, and feel, you know, think about your relationship with the earth and people down there. So it's, it's just an amazing place. And, you know, those, I'm glad that you liked the tours. I, I just wanted people to understand that, you know, I was living every day in a place where it wasn't just about floating around, it was about flying and a whole new way of moving around that actually made it possible for us to investigate scientific things that are just not possible to look at down here. Mm. Just on the Soyuz craft, Katie, um, it looked really cramped inside. What's the ride like home in a Soyuz craft? I mean, with the shuttle, it, it's obviously, it seems to be a smoother ride, but what's the ride like coming back to Earth in a Soyuz craft? You know, both ascent, you know, the launch and the entry in the Soyuz, I would say are intimate. You know, in the, in the shuttle, is, you know, it's like a big airliner or a small airliner, but still it's a large craft, whereas the Soyuz, I mean, my, my window was just a few inches from my face. And so for a lot of that time, we're actually just, you know, coming around to the right part of the earth to burn our engines and then and land. And so we're actually looking out the window and, it, and it's right there. Space is right there and earth is right there. And that beautiful view of, you know, passing over the Himalayas. I mean, it just we I'll always remember those last sights of the earth. And so just having it be so small and it's just the three of you who've trained together for a long time, you know, the three of you in, a, you know, circling the planet. It's, it's just a really special thing to be in such a, a small little place together. Mm. And we saw you play the flute a couple of times uh, on St. Patrick's Day and uh, also you did a duet with Ian Anderson from Jethro Tull. Um, and you said that you'd loaned the flutes from the Chieftains. I'm just wondering, did those flutes arrive back safely to Earth? And um, could you describe what it's like to play a musical instrument in space? Well, I'm, uh, some of those flutes, uh, one is already home and, uh, and uh, several are coming home uh, with Endeavour later on tonight when they land. So hopefully they're, I'm, I'm sure they're packed away nicely and the Endeavour crew was really nice about helping me get ready for departure. Playing the flute up there was pretty interesting, partly because I, I think gravity plays a certain role here for how you feel the flute and play the, the keys and that was a little bit different. And I love to play with my eyes open and in the cupola looking out. And I'll tell you, I saw Australia so many times. And it's just such an amazing and vast and beautiful country in so many different ways, so much different geography. So it's beautiful to look out. And I also loved playing with my eyes closed. And you'd just be floating around and suddenly, you know, some part of the space station would be right here. But you'd never know it because you'd just sort of float up to it. So I loved playing up there. Well, just to give you a bit of an anecdote, uh, Katie, uh, we were waiting at a bus with some friends uh, one Sunday evening. I think it was the evening before you flew back to Earth, and we used the NASA iPhone app to locate the space station, and we was lucky enough to see it fly overhead. And we told the people at the bus stop that, you know, look, there's the space station, and they went, wow. And, you know, they were amazed at, you know, they were just getting on with their lives, and they didn't notice that the space station was up there. And they were really amazed when they actually did spot it. So... The work that you do up there, it really does capture the public's imagination when they do know that you're up there. Well, I think that's great that you pointed out to folks, and I know I do it, you know, in our small time, town at home. I'll, I'll be at the local diner and look at my watch and say, hey, come on, everybody, let's go see. You're going to see the space station. And even though they know me and they know that I'm going to go on the space station at that time I was going to go, um, you know, they just don't think that they themselves can 
see it and when they look up in the sky and there it is brighter than any of the stars and they really see it and they realize that somebody who you know eats breakfast there is gonna be flying up there and living up there it, it makes it more real and you know it is a real place it's a special place there's important work going on there every day and it was a pleasure to be a part of it mm, that's just a, a segue to my next question uh, Katie and that's with regards to the more serious aspect of your work up there and that's the the scientific experiments and research that uh, you carried out up there. Of all those experiments and research, which is of the most interest to you? Well, one way to answer that question is to say that the medical experiments that actually examine, you know, how I'm doing and how I'm affected by space, you know, those are of great interest to me. Um, you know, one of those is osteoporosis. And up there, we are really good osteoporosis subjects because we lose bone at a rate about 10 times a regular person who has osteoporosis who is older. But often our medical histories are, are fairly uncomplicated and simple and makes it easier to study a complicated phenomenon like that. So I'm looking forward to the results of how much bone I did lose and then we also follow how I build that bone back. We're looking at the um, effectiveness of some of the drugs and countermeasures that we could be using down here on Earth um, to, to combat osteoporosis. And then there's the science experiments like crystallization and how liquids behave. That th These are things that we just can't study down here. And up in a microgravity environment, some of the effects that are very tiny and hard to define and hard to study down here can be studied you know, over great amounts of time and, and, and become and really clarify some complicated issues for us down here on Earth. So those have been really exciting as well. Well, fantastic, Katie. Look, thanks so much for speaking with us today. And uh, people down under, they certainly did, you know, keep an eye on things down here. And we're amazed at the work that NASA carries out. And uh, congratulations on completing your mission. And we wish you all the best for the future. And, and thanks for your time today. Well, thank you. And thanks for all you're doing for the space program as well. It sounds like you've really, you pay a lot of attention and, and work to share it. And it's a special program. So I'm, I'm really grateful that you do that. Thank you. Thanks, Katie. Good morning. Morning.